Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is in collaboration with Ed Scar, who convinced me to watch Annihilation, one of the creepiest sci-fi movies I have ever seen. The movie features some crazy mutated creatures, and Ed decided to recreate one of the iconic ones from the movie, and they were a little too creepy for me. So I decided to create my own mutated frog prince, just to stay on the post-apocalyptic fairy tale train. I'll put a link in the description box to Ed's video so you can go check out what he made. And I'll also link the other videos in this fairy tale series. But this fairy tale is set in a future where wizards, magicians, and fairy tale folk have all had a giant war and blown up half the earth. Fairy tale beings are just trying to make the best of what they've got around. But the worst thing for this little frog prince guy was that he was already being cursed to become a frog when he also got hit with a magic shockwave from a faraway attack. So not only is he cursed, but he's also mutated and his body has been magically fused with all of the pollution and trash that was cluttering up his lake. I mean, it's tough breaks, but at least he can do something about the curse. If only he can get a girl who's willing to smooch a giant frog. That can't be too hard to find, right? So to start off making this little frog's body, I'm using Sculpey Firm, which is a polymer clay. This is the only clay that I've found that I like so far. I made this little frame to hold the sculpture and then I created an armature for him which is just a circle of tin foil and attached it to the frame using this little nifty screw. And this is really awesome when I'm doing any kind of sculpture because this is keeping my fingers from smushing one part of his body while I'm trying to attach clay to another part. I went online to look at some images of different kinds of frogs to get an idea of how I wanted this guy to look. The one thing most of the frogs had in common was this completely derpy expression, so that's what I really wanted to nail on my prints. And I think a lot of what makes them look like that is the bug eyes that are going in two separate directions, so I tried to get that right <laughs> on his face. Okay, I have to come clean with you guys. I went through about 500 different ideas for this collaboration and I started several of them only to scrap them after I didn't like how it was going and had no interest in making those things. I only sculpted the frog's back legs and that's because I knew that I wanted the front legs to be made of some recycling materials that I have been saving up for projects like this. I was really excited to actually use some of these bits and to not have them just in a drawer in my craft section any longer. Um, basically feeling like I was lying to myself about using all of this trash that was accumulating here. <laughs> I thought the best way to hold all this trash together was to create a tiny really really thin frog arm and then glue everything on top of it just so it kept the frog arm shape. And then this part literally made me feel like the greatest artist in the world. <laughs> Once I started gluing all these little bits in place, I, magically it just started to look like exactly how I pictured it in my head and I was like really really having a lot of fun with this part of the build. I sprayed everything with some Krylon black primer and then I was ready to paint. I have a ton of different paints that are all accumulated over time from different places. Some are kind of expensive, some are really, really cheap, but um, the ones I'm using for painting most of his body were some that were gifted to me and they are specifically used for painting minis. And I think these have to be my favorite. I'll try, um, I'll dig them out and put the brand down in the description box for you guys but I really, really love how smooth they are and the coverage that they give. 
can't recommend them enough. These other ones are also for painting minis. I think they're from Wizards of the Coast. They're just some little paint pots that came with the kit that I uh, actually chopped up and didn't use as a kit, but stole the paints from. And they are also very good. And then to paint all of his magical markings, I'm using Pink Deco Art. And this works great if you're not doing a huge area. After adding some magical markings to his cardboard crown, we are almost finished with this build. I just needed to create a base. Since I've got tons of cardboard lying around, I decided to make the base out of cardboard. And then I hot glued on more bits of the trash that make up his arms because that is what's polluting his swamp and I mixed together some Mod Podge, black paint, and green paint, acrylic paint to seal everything in. Um, then I realized I wanted a lot more trash and a lot more <laughs> leaves and stuff floating in this pond, so I went back and added in some oregano, which looks like perfect as mini leaves. So if you guys want to try out having um, leaves, oregano pretty good. I clipped off the little metal bit that I had as the anchor and attached him with a hot glue gun. And then for the final bit, I added some UV resin and cured it under this ultraviolet flashlight. And there you have it, our post-apocalyptic frog prince is waiting for his smooch. Don't forget to check out Ed's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!